Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Wasim Larusi, and today we're diving into an exciting development into the biotech world. We're talking about Immunity Bio, ticker symbol IBRX, a company that is in the field of immunotherapy. Let's get into what Immunity Bio is all about, who's leading the charge, and the groundbreaking drug they've just had approved by the FDA. Let's go. Immunity Bio is a clinical stage biotechnology company focused on developing innovative therapies that harness the power of the immune system to treat cancer and infectious diseases. Their mission is to create a future where our immune system can fight off serious illnesses like cancer with minimal side effects. The company is known for its work in development therapies that target both the innate and adaptive immune systems, offering a multifaceted approach to disease treatment. So who's at the helm of Immunity Bio? IBRX is led by Richard Adcock, who is the current CEO. Richard comes from serving as CEO at Verity Health Systems, a regional health system in California. The company is also led by Dr. Patrick Son Xiong as executive chairman and global chief medical officer, a renowned physician, scientist, and entrepreneur, also the majority owner of Immunity Bio. You might know him as the founder of Nantworks and the inventor of Abraxan, a widely used cancer treatment. His vision for Immunity Bio is to transform the way we treat cancer by leveraging cutting edge science and technology. Let's dive deeper into Immunity Bio's recently approved drug, Antiva, also known as N803. This is a pretty exciting development in the world of cancer treatment, so let's break it down in simple terms. Antiva is designed to treat a specific type of bladder cancer called non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. This is a form of cancer that affects the inner lining of the bladder, but hasn't yet spread into the muscle layers. For years, the standard treatment has been a therapy called BCG, which involves introducing a weakened form of bacteria into the bladder to stimulate the immune system to attack the cancer cells. While BCG is effective for many patients, some don't respond to it, and that's where the real challenge lies. For patients whose cancer doesn't respond to BCG, the next steps often involve more invasive treatments, like removing the bladder which can significantly impact a patient's quality of life. This is where Antiva comes in as a game changer. So how does Antiva work? Antiva is not a chemotherapy drug. It's actually an immunotherapy. It's designed to boost your body's own immune system, helping it to fight the cancer more effectively. Specifically, Antiva works by activating two key components of the immune system, natural killer cells, and T cells. Natural killer cells are like the first responders of your immune system. Their job is to find and destroy abnormal cells, like cancer cells, before they can cause any more harm. T cells, on the other hand, are more like the special forces. They are trained to recognize and kill cells that have been infected or turned cancerous. Antiva supercharges these immune cells, making them more effective at targeting and destroying the bladder cancer cells. But here, is where it gets really interesting. Antiva is used in combination with BCG. BCG already primes the immune system, but when we add Antiva to the mix, it's like giving the immune system a turbo boost. Antiva makes the NK cells and T cells even more aggressive in going after the cancer cells, especially in cases where BCG alone wasn't enough. This dual approach significantly increases the chances of controlling the cancer without needing more drastic measures like surgery. Currently, Antiva is administered to patients after they've undergone treatment with Keytruda, but didn't achieve the desired response. This makes Antiva a critical option for patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer who are seeking alternative therapies. Antiva is given as an intravesical therapy, which means it is directly instilled into the bladder through a catheter. This localized delivery helps target the cancer cells more effectively while minimizing systemic side effects. Antiva costs around $36,000 per treatment, 
which is considered an expensive treatment, reflecting the cutting edge nature of this immunotherapy. Costs can vary depending on insurance coverage, patient assistance programs, and other factors. Given the need for multiple treatments over time, the financial impact can be significant. So it's important for patients to discuss options with their healthcare provider. In terms of efficacy, Antiva has shown an objective response rate of around 71% meaning that around 7 out of 10 patients see a measurable reduction in their cancer. However, it's important to know that like all therapies, Antiva comes with potential side effects. Common side effects include urinary symptoms such as frequency, urgency, and pain, as well as more systemic effects like fatigue and flu-like symptoms. These side effects are generally manageable, but patients should be closely monitored by their healthcare team. Antiva represents a vital option for patients who have not responded to other treatments, offering hope through its innovative approach to cancer therapy. However, as with any advanced treatment, it's important for patients to be fully informed about the costs, administration process, and potential side effects. The result? Patients who were previously facing very limited options now have a new, less invasive treatment that could potentially preserve their bladder and maintain their quality of life. The approval of Antiva represents a major advancement in the treatment of bladder cancer and highlights the power of immunotherapy in the fight against cancer. This FDA approval is a huge step forward, not just for immunity bio, but for cancer patients everywhere. It represents the potential for more effective and less toxic treatments, which is a game changer in the field of oncology. The approval of Antiva also positions immunity bio as a key player in the biotech industry, with a promising pipeline of other therapies in development. Immunity bio isn't just about one drug. The company has an extensive pipeline of therapies in development, making it a major player in the biotech field. Let's take a closer look at some of the most important developments within their pipeline and why they matter. One of the most exciting developments is their work with Antiva. Antiva is being studied in lung cancer and even head and neck cancer. The potential of this therapy to enhance the immune system's response across different types of tumors makes it a cornerstone of Immunity Bio's pipeline. In oncology, Immunity Bio is pursuing treatments for some of the most challenging cancers. This includes using their NK cell platforms, which are engineered to enhance the body's natural ability to fight tumors. These platforms are being tested in cancers such as pancreatic, ovarian, and colorectal cancers. The goal is to provide more effective and less toxic treatment options for patients who have limited alternatives. Beyond cancer, Immunity Bio is also making strides in infectious disease research, with ongoing trials targeting HIV. Their innovative approach involves using immune-modulating therapies to not only treat but potentially cure chronic infections. This is particularly exciting because it represents a potential breakthrough in an area where long-term treatment options are currently the norm. Everything sounds amazing until we get to their finances. Immunity Bio failed to have an earnings call or press release for Q2 2024. So let's break down Immunity Bio's financial performance for Q2 2024 based on their latest 10Q filing. Here's what you need to know. Immunity Bio reported total revenue of 1 million for the quarter, primarily driven by product sales. However, the company continues to operate at a loss with a net loss of 134 million for the quarter, which is slightly lower than the same period last year, but very significant based on its company size and stage. Operating costs and expenses were significant, with a total of 100 million, with research and development expenses at 51 million, and selling general admin expenses at 49 million. These figures highlight the company's heavy investment in their extensive pipeline and operations. Now, let's talk cash and debt. Immunity Bio holds a cash position of approximately 218 million, which is 130 million in cash and cash equivalents, plus 88 million of marketable securities. However, the company also carries substantial debt of 998 million, resulting in a net cash deficit of around 781 million. This financial situation is compounded by ongoing operational challenges reflected in their negative cash flows. However, they have significant debt with just 
interest expenses of 29 million for the quarter, contributing to the company's financial challenges. Additionally, the company has a large number of shares outstanding, with 686 million shares. In summary, while Immunity Bio is making substantial progress in developing new therapies, their financials reflect the challenges of funding such an extensive pipeline. The company's significant expenses, large net losses, and debt underscore the risk, but also the potential rewards of investing in a biotech company at this stage of its development. Understanding these financial details is crucial for everyone looking to invest in or follow Immunity Bio's journey. Keep these figures in mind as you evaluate the company's future prospects and the potential impact of their pipeline developments. Antiva is truly an extraordinary drug, already making a difference in the lives of patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Its ability to offer a new line of defense after treatments like Eutruda have failed is a game changer. As more patients gain access to Antiva, we can expect its sales to grow, potentially bringing significant revenue to Immunity Bio. If Antiva was the only product in Immunity Bio's portfolio, the excitement and valuation around the company would likely be much higher. Investors and analysts would focus on its success and the revenue potential of a single breakthrough product. However, Immunity Bio's vast pipeline, while promising, is also a double-edged sword. The sheer scale of research and development across multiple products has led to massive expenses, pushing the company into significant debt. This financial burden can dilute the potential gains from Antiva, as the company's resources are spread thin across many projects. The ongoing research and development investments are necessary to bring future products to market but they also place a heavy strain on Immunity Bio's finances. Immunity Bio seems to even double down on its research and development. With just a quick glance at their LinkedIn employees, you can see a very small sales team compared to their team of scientists, and they're hiring even more. If Antiva were the sole focus, Immunity Bio might have a clearer path to profitability and a simpler narrative for investors to get behind. But with a vast pipeline comes the potential for multiple successes and the financial risks that come with developing them all at once. The future of Immunity Bio hinges on balancing these risks while maximizing the life-saving potential of Antiva and other therapies in their portfolio. So that's the story of Immunity Bio. Do you believe Antiva alone can turn things around? Or is the company spreading itself too thin with such an extensive pipeline? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, what other biotech companies are you watching? Let's get a conversation started. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights into the biotech industry. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.